This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Corrie Samuel. The Eclogues by Virgil. Eclogue 10. Gallus. This now, the very latest of my toils, vouchsafe me, Arethusa. Needs must I sing a brief song to Gallus, brief, but yet such as Lycoris's self may fitly read. Who would not sing for Gallus? So, when thou beneath Sicanian billows glidest on, may Doris blend no bitter wave with thine. Begin. The love of Gallus be our theme, and the shrewd pangs he suffered, while, hard by, the flat-nosed she-goats browse the tender brush. We sing not to deaf ears, no word of ours but the woods echo it. What groves or lawns held you, ye dryad maidens, when for love, love all unworthy of a loss so dear, Gallus lay dying? For neither did the slopes of Pindus or Parnassus stay you then, no, nor Aeonian Agonipe. Him, even the laurels and the tamarisks wept. For him, outstretched beneath a lonely rock, wept pine-clad Minolus, and the flinty crags of cold Lycaeus. The sheep, too, stood around. Of us they feel no shame, poet divine. Nor of the flock be thou ashamed. Even fair Adonis by the rivers fed his sheep. Came shepherd, too, and swineherd footing slow, And from the winter acorns dripping wet, Menalcus, all with one accord exclaim, From whence this love of thine? Apollo came, Gallus, art mad? he cried, Thy bosom's care another love is following. Therewithal Sylvanus came, With rural honours crowned, the flowering fennels and tall lilies shook before him. Yea, and our own eyes beheld Pan, god of Arcady, with blood-red juice of the elderberry, and with vermilion dyed. Wilt ever make an end? quoth he. Behold, love wrecks not out of it. His heart no more with tears is sated than with streams the grass, bees with a cytisus, or goats with leaves. Yet will ye sing, Arcadians, of my woes upon your mountains, sadly he replied. Arcadians that alone have skill to sing. Oh, then, how softly would my ashes rest, if of my love one day your flutes should tell. And would that I, of your own fellowship, or dresser of the ripening grape had been, or guardian of the flock. For surely then, let Phyllis, or Amyntas, or who else, bewitch me? What if swart Amyntas be? Dark is the violet, dark the hyacinth among the willows, neath the limber vine. Reclining would my love have lain with me, Phyllis plucked garlands, or Amyntas sung. Here are cool springs, soft mead and grove, like Horace. Here might our lives with time have worn away. But me, mad love of the stern war-god holds, Armed amid weapons and opposing foes, Whilst thou, ah, might I but believe it not, Alone, without me, and from home afar, Look'st upon alpine snows and frozen rhine. Ah, may the frost not hurt thee, May the sharp and jagged ice not wound thy tender feet, I will depart, retune the songs I framed in verse Chalcidian to the oaten reed of the Sicilian swain. Resolved am I, in the woods rather, with wild beasts to couch, and bear my doom, and character my love upon the tender tree trunks. They will grow, and you, my love, grow with them. And meanwhile, I, with the nymphs, will haunt Mount Minolus, or hunt the keen wild boar. No frost so cold, but I will hem with hounds thy forest glades, Parnetheus. Even now, methinks, 
I range o'er rocks, through echoing groves, and joy to launch Sidonian arrows from a Parthian bow. As if my madness could find healing thus, or that God soften at a mortal's grief. Now neither hamadryads, no, nor songs delight me more. Ye woods, away with you! No pangs of ours can change him, not though we in the mid-frost should drink of Hebrus's stream, and in wet winters face Scythonian snows. Or, when the bark of the tall elm-tree bowl of drought is dying, should, under cancer's sign, in Ethiopian deserts drive our flocks. Love conquers all things, yield we too to love. These songs, Pyrian maids, shall it suffice your poet to have sung, the while he sat, and of slim mallow wove a basket fine. To Gallus ye will magnify their worth, Gallus, for whom my love grows hour by hour, as the green alder shoots in early spring. Come, let us rise. The shade is wont to be baneful to singers, baneful is the shade cast by the juniper, crops sicken too in shade. Now, homeward, having fed your fill, Eve's star is rising. Go, my she-goats, go. End of Eclogue 10 End of the Eclogues by Virgil